Good morning. Thank you for joining us here today. I'd like to acknowledge that we are on the territory of the signatories of Treaty 6, and I acknowledge the Métis people who share deep connection to this land. I am joined here today by the Alberta NDP education critic, Sarah Hoffman, critic for multiculturalism, Jasavir Diol, critic for health, David Shepard, and the Alberta NDP candidate for Edmonton Decor, Sharif Haji, by Abdir Mahan Ibrahim and Habibo Shuri, both local parents, and of course, by our leader, Rachel Notley. I would also like to thank the Somali Inn for hosting us today. I am Rhiannon Hoyle, and I am the Alberta NDP candidate for Edmonton South. I am also, like many Albertans, an immigrant. While I have lived here for decades, it should come as no shock that moving to a new country can be profoundly difficult. I know that I share the sentiment of my colleagues here that we want to ensure Alberta is a welcoming place for all who want to move here. Feeling like you belong makes a significant difference in one's confidence and ability to be a better future for themselves and for their families. As a mother, it is so important for me to know that my children feel welcome, confident, and happy in their daily lives. The biggest part of their day is school. A sense of belonging in education is so important. To embrace the different languages and cultures of everyone that decides to come to Alberta will not only give families a sense of belonging, it strengthens our province as a whole by helping people from all walks of life succeed here. To speak more on that, I would like to turn things over to David Shepard. Well, thank you, Rhiannon. Setting up new Albertans to succeed in our province is imperative to not only the longevity in which they and their families stay in Alberta, but for their mental health. When people feel welcome, when they have opportunities in front of them and where they are celebrated and comfortable to be who they are, that is when people thrive. Giving our younger generations the opportunity to learn about their culture and learn in the language they speak better sets them up for success here in our province. Identifying the gaps that exist in language and learning for racialized Albertans is part of our duty as government, and it is part of the Alberta NDP's commitment to collect the data so that we can, we can build a better future for every Albertan. Now, the Alberta NDP has committed that we will standardize the collection of disaggregated race-based data, which was a key recommendation for the Alberta Anti-Racism Advisory Council's report that was released in 2020. We're also committed to establishing an anti-racism office and commissioner to help identify and address racial inequalities in our province. These are important first steps to help us know as a province where we can start and where the system is failing racialized Albertans in all areas like health care, economic participation, and education. So to speak more on that now, I'd like to pass things to Sharif. Thank you, David. Education is so critical to set young people up, not only in their future passion and work, but as a place to develop a sense of belonging and a social camaraderie. However, for many students in Alberta, language and culture barriers can prevent them from fully experiencing their wonder the wonderful things that our schools offer. In many ways, Alberta, in many places in Alberta where there is signif significant rise in the number of Somali refugees and immigrant students. Newcomers from Africa are the fastest growing population in Alberta, and we must support this community's important contributions to this province. However, with, so, with, with language and cultural barriers, many Somali youth experience frustrations with education and unfortunately drop out of the schools. 
we must provide opportunities for young Albertans from all backgrounds to flourish in their classrooms. With that, I would like to turn things to over to our leader, Rachel Nodley. Thank you so much, Sharif, and thank you everybody else for being here uh, today, and uh, thank you again for the Somali Inn for having us here uh, on this day. Ensuring that all young Albertans have access to a quality education and access to the best curriculum is an essential job of any government. And that's why we at the Alberta NDP have committed to consulting broadly and making the necessary changes to the UCP's backwards and inappropriate curriculum and why we continue to fight for properly funded and properly supported classrooms. Now, as Sharif mentioned, newcomers from Africa are the fastest growing population in Alberta, and so we must give Somali youth the best advantages to their education that we can possibly provide. And that is why I'm so proud today to commit that. Should the Alberta NDP form the next government, we will develop a Somali language and culture curriculum for Alberta students. <laughs> Providing students an opportunity to learn in a variety of languages not only helps youth strengthen their ties to their cultural identity and maintain their heritage, it also helps them build important language and literary sk literacy skills overall. And it keeps them engaged with learning and it keeps them in school. As Rhiannon mentioned, a sense of belonging inside the classroom can make a significant difference in a student's confidence and how captivated they are with their school and their learnings. It gives students a positive experience with school, which can translate into a positive experience in their future aspirations to start a career, build a business, and raise their family here as part of our community. Alberta currently offers 25 languages for students to study in addition to English and French. So with the Somali language and culture curriculum, along with the Alberta NDP's previous commitment to develop a Filipino curriculum, we can provide more inclusive learning opportunities for all who want to call Alberta home. So I look forward to working with our dedicated candidates and families and leaders in the Somali community uh, to develop this important curriculum so that families across the province have access to the best education for their kids. But before we take questions on this, I would like, of course, to turn the podium over to Abdirahman to say a few words um, about how this will impact his family. Thank you, Rachel. This announcement is very important and welcome news. Learning one's mother tongue helps us connect children to their cultural heritage. It allows them to understand and appreciate the customs, traditions, and values of their ethnic community. It, give, it gives them a sense of identity and belonging, which can be especially important if they are growing in, up in a place whether their language, their community is a minority. Being able to communicate with family is vital. It helps them maintain relationships with grandparents or other relatives who may speak only mother tongue. We also know that learning multiple languages can be shown to have cognitive benefits, including improved memory, problem solving, and critical thinking skills. Children who learn their mother tongue in, to, in a school in addition to dominate language and country they live may have a cognitive advantage uh, other more than monolinguals. Plus, this opens up professional opportunities to our youth and give them the confidence to pursue different areas. Overall, learning one's mother language is an important way for children to connect with their culture and, and heritage. A 
and maintain family relations and potentially gain cognitive and professional advantage later in life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abdiram. And uh, we are, of course, very uh, happy to take any questions uh, folks from the media may have. Thank you. Just a reminder, if you're on Zoom, it's the raise hand function. If you're on the phone, it's star nine. To get in the question queue, we'll just check if there's any questions in the room. Thank you all. Uh, my name is my name is Duran Adan. I'm from BBC Somali Service, and thank you very much for this announcement. It is very very important for uh, everyone uh, who is here in Alberta, and especially for Somali community. Uh, my question is: Somali community has been here for many years, not this year, not 2023, not 2020, uh, 22. Why this is this announcement is this time? Can we say this is because of uh, election campaign or is this something true? Thank you uh, very much. You know, I mean, I think that's a really good question. I think that as we uh, do the work that we do uh, to address um, uh, uh, anti-racism and, and to grow uh, community strength and connectivity, we hear more and more from communities about uh, what is a priority for them. And so uh, as a result of the work uh, that uh, Jasveer and uh, David have been doing um, uh, over the course of the last few years, engaging uh, around uh, these kinds of issues, this is an issue that, that we heard loud and clear, perhaps a little bit more than, than before, about how critically important it is. And so, you know, uh, you know they say, like, um, uh, if, if you're running late, the best time to do something is right now. And so we're very pleased to, to be able to offer this now. Thank you. Uh, uh, this is Somali Media, Melissa Fron, and uh, it's Alberta-based media. Uh, to begin with, uh, there are other languages that are al already in the Alberta education curriculum. Is there any evidence that that helped uh, the children from uh, those uh, language marathon? And uh, this was also NDB promise in 2019, and not, not just a promise, uh, Minister of Education David Egan has uh, discussed it with the community, he's gonna mm -hmm. uh, do that. Is this term, if uh, NDB formed government, will be uh, implant implanted, or are we gonna wait uh, next term again? <laughs> Well, of course, I guess it all really depends on, on who is in government. I mean, we made that commitment in 2019, and had we been successful then, we would already be talking about the Somalian uh, uh, curriculum, and we'd probably be having a, a, a media event in a classroom with kids who were enjoying the benefits of it, and we'd get to show off uh, the way in which it's been uh, uh, building and helping the community. Um, in terms of the evidence uh, that we've seen with respect to some of the other languages, we do know that uh, it's it's very positive. The evidence is, um, uh, you know, across the world, quite frankly, that maintaining uh, language and that that community and cultural connectivity is fundamentally important uh, to a sense of belonging, a sense of confidence, and ultimately through that, sen uh, uh, measurable achievement as well as a, a stronger community bonds and better mental health. So. Uh, we are absolutely uh, convinced that, that there is uh, tremendous value to this. Um, we also um, made a commitment to, on the eve of the last election to develop the Filipino uh, um, language and curriculum, and unfortunately the UCP uh, uh, did not go ahead with that. And so that is, uh, and, and, and it is a similarly important initiative. And so I think we have to just remain open to what folks in the communities are telling us uh, there is a need for. And of course, we know that the Somalian community particularly uh, is growing. It's, as was mentioned earlier, it's the fastest growing community uh, in Alberta right now. And it is the second largest Somalian community we have in Alberta in all of Canada. So we need to be leading. And we're very proud to be setting ourselves up to do that. And uh, I very much hope that this policy goes ahead regardless of who gets elected. But uh, definitely, uh, you can count on the NDP to get it done. Thank you. Now we'll just go to the phone line caller. Please state your name and outlet and who you'd like to direct your question to. Your line is open. Go 
Go ahead, caller. Your line is open. Hey, thank you. My name is T. Abby. I'm a run for LCC Media. And I was just, and I thank you for the invite to this, uh, to this uh, press brief. And I'm just wondering what the thinking is. I'm excited for Somalian communities, obviously, should um, Abata NDP uh, win the elect win the election, but it's just going to start a conversation about doing the same for other um, ethnic groups like the Yoruba, Igbo, Kanuri, Awusa, and so other communities that have long established residents in Alberta. And I'm just wondering, um, is there any research that supports that language will keep Black students in school? Um, are there no more deeper problems and language problems regarding integration? problems regarding racism and so on, and structural problems. And I'm just wondering, is this the one um, one ad fix all that you're proposing to help black kids remain in school um, for longer? And there are deeper problems. Well, so, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that question. So, uh, you know, th th this is certainly, no, this is not the end of the road by any means. This is uh, one, one uh, step along the path, um, uh, both in terms of, um, uh, supporting uh, the educational uh, capacity and outcomes of, of uh, young people um, and in a larger uh, from a larger perspective one of many tools that uh, uh, has been shown to be an effective uh, um, uh, strategy for reducing the consequences of, of systemic racism uh, in our institutions across uh, frankly the country as well as the province so um, you know we always want to be engaged in an ongoing dialogue uh, that there's not there's not a beginning and an end to that dialogue that dialogue has to be ongoing and continuous uh, with um, uh, new Canadians and with uh, members of visible minority groups about how to most effectively reduce uh, the consequences and the the day-to-day -day, uh, existence of systemic racism so um, there are pieces in our education system that that we can improve on and we will continue to do that work. There's also pieces in our justice system, in our health system, in our post-secondary system, in our uh, support systems. There's so many things, just even in the world of the provincial government, that we can do to address systemic racism. That's why, of course, uh, David's bill uh, that, that unfortunately was not successful, that, but that we would bring back to collect race-based data is so important because it shows us a whole range of areas across the of what it is that government does where we may have some systemic racism issues that require the attention of government and the change in policy so this uh, T you know you're right this is one small piece um, but it's one small piece today that we didn't have yesterday um, and that we hope to be able to achieve uh, after election day on May 29th and uh, we look forward to having that ongoing dialogue do you have a follow-up question? Okay, we're going to go one more pass for questions. Uh, I, yes, there's thank you, actually. I was just wondering how we can have the same conversation regarding other um, African communities like the Yoruba, the Kanuri, the Igbo, and so on and so forth. I'm excited, obviously, for the Somalian and the yeah. Filipino communities, but it's, it's feeling like they're up the pecking, the pecking ladder. What are your thoughts concerning other communities and language um, at the moment? Yeah. Well, it very much, as I say, it, it depends very much on what the communities are saying to us and the and and the position, the the what they're bringing to us as something that is a priority for them. Uh, we're absolutely open to to those other conversations. As I've said, you know, there's there's English, French and 25 other languages that are currently taught. So that conversation has been ongoing, um, not so much with other African communities though, you're absolutely right. And so if there is a, a significant population here that, that um, uh, is, is uh, still um, uh, very much connected with their, with their mother tongue, then I think that, that we would certainly be open to those conversations as well, absolutely. Um, and as I say, this is a start, not an end. Okay, we have one more time for one more question in the room. 
Hello, I'm Malay Notley. My name is Dunya Nur, and I am a woman of African descent. I'm also from the Somali community. Uh, I grew up in Canada literally my whole life. I was mm -hmm. born 1989 during the Civil War. My family came to Canada, and I was really lucky to have migrated to a place that I can call home. However, there's a lot of issues in terms of systemic racism, um, Islamophobia, Afrophobia, and um, coming from the Somali community, I think not only statistically are we the largest and the fastest growing community um, for communities of African descent, but we have multifaceted issues. And as someone that grew up, my family is not an economic migrant, and there's intersectionalities even within communities that are African continentally and within black communities. Um, we face civil war, uh, we're survivors in terms of being uh, displacement, and I think also as an anti-racist expert and practitioner, um, one thing I could say is that incorporating our language, our African indigenous languages, is actually, matter of fact, proven to be the first step to eradicate and dismantle uh, racism. Mm -hmm. When you look at the decade of people of African descent, it talks about three things, recognition, justice, and development. And recognition is actually first before we even look at justice and development. Uh, so I would like to thank you and your team for championing this. Uh, my only question, Mm -hmm. is that uh, how could we as a community play a role uh, because we have elders, we have cultural keepers, we have um, people in our community that are really, they, they preserved our language. So how can we work with the government and how could we support you? And I think it's also time for all people of African descent to not play uh, divisive politics. It's not them against us. Mm -hmm. uh, we are pan-Africanist and if we did it, I'm sure all other communities will benefit because I believe if you help and support and promote the most marginalized and the most excluded communities, which are people of African descent, that are refugees, that are displaced, that go through anti-black racism and Islamophobia, then by extension, all African people, all black people benefit. So how could we help you? Well, thank you uh, for that for that statement and and question and and I, I as I, it gives me an opportunity to just uh, uh, reaffirm something that's a really important part of curriculum development, which is when we're doing language and cultural development, it must be done uh, by the community for the community. So this is not a matter of okay, we're going to do this and then we're going to ship it off to a couple of bureaucrats in the education department to write the curriculum. It will be a very uh, a, a process that is based on ongoing dialogue. Um, iterative uh, conversations uh, to make sure that uh, the that folks that you are describing some of the elders uh, in in your communities are part of that conversation in terms of um, uh, designing the language curriculum but also some of those cultural pieces that would necessarily be part of, of that program thank you everyone that concludes our press conference for today thank you all so much